Hi, I'm Brody from Brody's Kitchen. It's Wednesday night and we're making a casual family dinner and we are working with steak and potatoes. So we are doing french fries. Uh, we're doing a classic sirloin steak, a filet, and some steak tartare. And what goes better with them than french fries? So Charlie actually peeled and chopped these for me. He's been such a great resource. And a little trick that I do, we started making french fries at home during quarantine. Maybe not, you know, the best um, habit, but hey, you know, it's kind of fun and we're not going out to restaurants as much. But I actually save the oil and reuse it. And I just strain it through a strainer when I'm done. And that way I'm not throwing out so much oil. We don't make them that often. I just throw it in the cabinet right above the stove. And if you're going to fry at home and you don't have a fryer, one of these candy thermometers are invaluable. So I put that on there and that way I can see what temperature the oil is getting to. So I'm gonna bring it up to 320 degrees. I'm gonna go over and put that on the stove. So my oil can be heating up while I get everything else going. So I took the strip steak and this little filet that's for Hunter out about 45 minutes ago. I salted both sides and I'm just letting them come closer to room temperature because they cook better that way. And I am going to work on the steak tartare. I don't know if you can hear my kiddos in the background. They are playing tag outside. So I like my steak tartare kind of traditional. So instead of an onion, I like to use shallot. Hi, Charlie. Hi. And where's Hunter? Ah, he's here too, not to be left out. He's being insane. He's running around outside screaming Hulk smash. <laughs> Hulk smash? Yes. Mm, I think you've got to do a little more working out before you can do a Hulk smash. Is that what you're going to be for Halloween, Hunter? Yeah. Hulk? Yeah. Yes, we've been putting up all of our Halloween decorations. And um, yeah, we're not sure what Halloween's gonna be like this year, but we can always make our house nice and festive. So it's been kind of fun to kind of get out those decorations that we had stored away, you know, pumpkins and skeletons and skulls. Yes. And, yes. and we have a lot of things. We have stuff for inside and outside, and you know, there's sort of no shortage. We have a dog skull. We have a skull. We have um, a dead dog on the roof. It's not real it's a skeleton. Yes, so I don't know if you can hear Charlie, but he was saying that we actually have some dog skeletons and we put those on the roof because you know then everyone can see them and they look nice and scary as anyone's coming in. So I'm just chopping the shallot and I like to make it really, really, really small. Much smaller than you would possibly imagine. So I just keep chopping and chopping and chopping. Now that's a little bit of a personal preference. You know, if you don't mind, I don't really like raw onion. So I like this very, very small. Another option you have, oh my goodness, who's coming up on my side here? Oh, Hunter! Yeah, it's Hunter. It's mine. And I thought, you know, we were being attacked. <laughs> so, you know, again, I just keep chopping and chopping and chopping until it's super fine. Another option would actually be to shave a shallot or an onion on, you know, that like vegetable peeler, cheese grater contraption that most people have. And so, just gonna keep on chopping. And so here we have the shallots, very nice and finely chopped up. And so then I'm just gonna take some parsley and this I'm not quite as particular about. So just take some leaves off the top and just give them a rough chop. I'll take out some of the stems, but I'm not super particular about the parsley. And parsley, I've said this before, but I view parsley as like the salt of herbs. You can essentially use it in any dish and it's just gonna highlight different flavors. And that's the same thing with salt. So you know, if you compare salt with pepper, pepper in a dish actually brings you know, its own unique flavor. And salt 
salt does not. It enhances the flavors that are already there. And so that's kind of how I think about parsley. You can use parsley in anything and it's just gonna bring a nice little fresh herbaceousness. So it's a good option if you're not sure what herb to use. You can always have some parsley in the house because you can always use it. So I'm just gonna flip my cutting board over, save the little cleanup stuff for right now. And I'm gonna wipe my, clean my knife off here, my towel that I have handy. And I am going to work on cutting the steak. So I have a couple pieces. I have a little leftover from Hunter's piece and I just cut, cut it into strips initially and we'll cut it into small pieces. And again, this is a little bit, you know, always to your preference. I like a hand chopped steak tartare personally. My husband prefers it ground. And um, you can actually ask the meat department at the grocery store to grind the meat for you, and they will. Now it's better if you do that earlier in the day um, before they've cleaned the meat machine. So the worst thing is if you go in after work and you're, you have in your mind that you want to get safe tartare and ask them to grind it for you and they've already cleaned the meat grinder, chances are they're not going to want to get it all dirty and have to take it apart and clean it again. But if you do, you ask them to grind it through two times for steak tartare and it you know, comes up with a, a really good product. We've done that as well. But I always prefer hand chopped. Looks like the boys are back in. Did you guys have a good game of time? Yeah. <laughs> Not to Dudley, he left out. Good. Barking at someone. Barking at someone coming across the street. Well, that's pretty typical. Yeah, have you noticed our kitchen's different? Our kitchen is different. Isn't that right, Charlie? We moved. We moved. So this is in what we're calling our small rental house. So we're going to be here for a little while while we're doing construction work on our brand new home. So. We are super, super excited for the kitchen that we're going to be designing at the new house and yeah. I've shared a couple posts about that. Well, I am. I think everybody's going to be pretty happy about that. And, but you know, the reality of it is you don't need a huge kitchen to make great food. And sometimes you just end up with too much space. And in fact, it's kind of funny with my kitchen that I'm designing now. I've had a number of people tell me that the kitchen's too small and I'm like they're crazy because it's actually slightly slightly bigger than the kitchen I had before and I know that my kitchen I had before I thought was perfect it functioned so well so I'm gonna follow a lot of the same layout concepts that I had before because it functions so well for us but that's been a fun project for for me to work on and um, Charlie and the kids, they'll get to get, and Hunter, they'll get to get a little more involved with their bedrooms. And that'll be fun for them. Right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to... I still wish that we fully lived here. You wish we lived here the whole time? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this is a pretty nice house. We have a very nice neighborhood, a nice yard, a nice yeah, pool. Perfect. We're close to a park. So, you know, what more could two little boys want? works out pretty well for them. I'm just gonna keep chopping and chopping. We are almost done, and then we'll get to work on the french fries and the steak. So, I have the steak in a bowl here, all chopped up, and I'm going to make the sauce for it. And for that, I need one egg yolk. And again, this is something that you want to take out before and have it come more to room temperature. And if you forget to do that, all you need to do is put the egg in some hot water from the sink and leave it in there for five, 10 minutes and it'll help bring the whole egg up to room temperature. So I like mustard. So I put a spoonful of mustard in there. And then I'll adjust it to taste as I go along. And I have some olive oil. Probably a tablespoon so far. I'm gonna mix that up. You can come in, Charlie, if you want. Yeah, I was just looking at what it is. Yeah, what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
like an aioli. I'm the one that cut the french fries. I know, I told you that you cut the french fries. You're an excellent, excellent helper. Our oil for the french fries got a little too hot. No. So we're letting it cool down. We get pepper. That can happen. And again, that's why you have that thermometer so you know what the temperature is. So I'm just gonna toss this around with the salt and the pepper. Try to get it really well mixed. Just a little more salt. I am going to add in, let me get this where you can see it. So the shallots. But most of them, you can always go back and add more. But you can't take them out once they're in there. Get that mixed in, and I'm going to pour about half of that mixture. Again, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. So I always like to add gradually, and that gives me more options. Let's kind of see how that tastes. Very good. So, I'm going to add the parsley in. By the way, guys, go subscribe to our, to our YouTube channel, too. I know. Charlie's been trying to get me to do more YouTube. He's right. And especially for my videos. And so, we are going to be up on YouTube, Brady's Kitchen. So, please find us there, and we're going to be adding more and more videos as we go. So, Don't forget, like and subscribe to it. <laughs> and then like and subscribe. Obviously, he is a YouTube regular and knows all the lingo. He's probably more experienced at it than, than I am. So I'm going to check out my french fries, the oil. And we are getting back down to temperature. This is a little bit of messy business. So I don't know if you want to watch it along or not. Maybe Charlie can help me video. OK, then. We are going to, can you come see close so they can see us put it in the oil? Because it's going to get really bubbly. Can you see that? Yes, yes, they can. All right. Mix them around. Let's see if I have room for all of these. And we are going to, I'm going to try to get them all in there. We'll let these go for about six minutes and we'll take them out, bring the, temp the oil back up to temperature and then we'll fry them for a second time. So I decided to mix in a little more mustard and then I decided to add capers. So I take them out of the jar and put them on a paper towel to get off some of that extra liquid and I'm just going to throw those right in and mix it all around and again you can put hot sauce Worcestershire sauce anything you want basically anything you want basically but I think this will be good and so that's ready and we're frying our french fries and, and we have the cast iron skillet going now and we are going to get the other steaks in the cast iron so here I've got the steak and really important is to pat it completely dry with paper towel. And then I'm going to go straight in the skillet and I'm going to take my paper towel and really press it down. And that's to get good surface area with the cast iron skillet so that you get a good sear. Sometimes I actually use something besides just a paper towel because the steam can come up through here and, and burn you if you're not careful. So we like ours rare, so we do usually three to four minutes each side, and that's it. If you like it a little more cooked, you should then finish it in a 400 degree oven for kind of three to four more minutes. So here you can see that sear that we got, which is great. I'm gonna take that off and let it rest. And here's our tiny little filet. Sorry about that, it should be good too. And I'm just going to turn off this pan and push it off the heat. 
And here we have our french fries. They look like they are very good and crispy. We did those in two batches on the second time around, trying to make sure that the oil stayed up to temperature. So we are just gonna plate everything up and head to the table. So if you're cooking steak correctly, it's gonna get a little smoky in your house. So the trick that I do when I'm done, I take that cast iron skillet and I actually go into the oven. And that kind of lets it cool off in there, keeps the smoke in there, and then it doesn't go all around the house and we can enjoy our dinner. So I hope we've inspired you to make steak tartare at home and homemade french fries absolutely delicious. If you have any questions, always reach out and ask. We're here to help. Good night.